There aren't a whole lot of defensive videos on YouTube, but of course, Team Golremi has got your back. We've got a whole list of defensive videos. You can just check right down below in the description box, plus the 21 day challenge where we've covered a ton of defensive work. So today we are gonna break down one of the best defensive minds in the game, Mr. Verratti. Not only what he does well defensively, but offensively as well. Let's go. All right, guys, we've got a Q&A coming up on our podcast channel. That's the 11th commandment. So throw your comments right down below in the comment section and we will get to them in a video that will only be on the 11th commandment. You'll notice that Verratti goes down to the ground a whole lot when he goes into tackle. Even if it doesn't seem like he needs to, he tends to go down. What it does is give him power. It makes sure that the attacking player doesn't go through him or past him. He can trip him up if he needs to. So you'll notice in all these plays, what he's doing is he's obviously, he's, he's going to ground, but he's getting up quickly. He wants to recover the ball. And a majority of the time he recovers the ball. He doesn't, he doesn't necessarily look to just smash somebody when he's going to the ground. That's the difference between a sliding tackle when someone wants to just clear and kill you and when you're a defensive midfielder and you want to retain possession of the ball. So notice that that's one of the first things he's looking for when he goes in to make those tackles, despite him going to the ground. All right. One other simple principle for you guys to take away from Verratti and that you can put in your own game is that you'll notice one of the reasons he wins so many of his tackles is because he's attacking from the blind side. That's something that you can do as a defensive midfielder. It's something you can do as a defender. Just remember this, especially for those skillful players. You don't just want to run up at them. You don't want to, even if you think you're behind another defender who's going to tackle him first, you want to attack from the blind side as much as you can. What you see here is that the ball comes into the attacking player. He turns and takes, takes his run, but Verratti already knows that he didn't see him. He did not see him. All right. The guy was able to see, you can see what the player knows. All right. And because of that, boom, he doesn't expect that tackle to come in. And you see the same principle here. So if we pause it right here, you'll spot the attacking player sees virtually everyone but doesn't suspect that Verratti is even gonna make an attempt at the ball. And of course, boom, poof. It's as if the guy didn't even see him at all, all right? That's a principle that you can put into your own game if you wanna win your tackles, all right? You act like you're not going for the ball, you immediately do. The guy, you know that the player can't see you, that's when you double team. You don't double team just because you have numbers up. You double team because you know you're gonna be at an absolute advantage when this guy has no idea that all of a sudden he's under pressure. That's what Verratti's good at. Uh, let's close things off with a tackle against Messi. This is one of those back heel tackles that a lot of people say you shouldn't do. I don't know why the YouTube comment section is so adamant about telling players that they shouldn't go to ground, they shouldn't cleat people. You guys can go look at all the, the cleats up tackles. We take a lot of flack for people telling them that they should be ready to, to deal with studs up tackles because that happens. It happens, people. It, once you become a pro or if you play in a Sunday league, it will happen. They will go cleats up. If you don't go cleats up too, you will get hurt. So know that that's going to happen, all right? But on this tackle, when he goes to ground, it's an orthodox because, I don't know, somebody somewhere along the line taught them some school bullshit and they told them that that's the way you're supposed to tackle. It's all nonsense, guys. The, the reason this works is because that's how you get the ball. If it wasn't successful, he wouldn't do it. End of story, all right? So against Messi here, it's an almost even foot race. Verratti seems to beat him, but the only way that he's going to get it, he could go in with hit the outside of his right. But the thing is, he's not going to get enough power on it. All right. And Messi, obviously with his left foot, may get a poke on the ball. He doesn't want that. He knows he needs to come in. He slides, so he slides full body and he uses his heel to make sure also that Messi doesn't go by him. You'll notice that he's already cleared the ball, but he still hooks Messi. Why? That's something they're gonna tell you, don't do that. You shouldn't do that. Ooh, players don't do that. You have to be in uh, all this. It's nonsense, all right? He hooked the ball. He hooked the man too. That's what defenders do. It's gonna happen. Or maybe I shouldn't be speaking as a pro. I mean, uh, that's because if you're, if you're not expecting to, to learn what's going on in the professional game, then don't come to me. You know, don't come to us here at Golarimi. We're gonna tell you how it is, not how you want it to be. All right, so that's a principle that you guys need to know uh, playing in, in tournaments and games across the world, you're going to find players doing this. All right, so one of the first things you'll notice when Verratti keeps the ball is, okay, despite his size, his ability to keep space between the ball and the attacker is what gives Verratti all of his talent. What we want to pick out at this point right here is that Verratti receives the ball. Any of you defensive midfielders or any of you guys that just play in the center of the midfield know that you need to know where everyone is around you. Otherwise, you're just going to lose the ball. So what you see here is that Verratti waits. He waits, boom, as soon as the guy comes into him, he knows now this guy's behind me. There's no chance. I have space between him and the ball. That's all he was waiting for. Other than that, he didn't know what's behind him. All right. And even then, 
the players aren't really reacting. So once he makes his turn, then he can go and get out. And we'll talk about how he gets out all the time. Make sure you have a look at that initial action. Once he gets the ball, he knows the first thing to do to protect it. That's point number one. Anywhere you play in the midfield, especially if you play defensive midfield, once you receive the pass, you have to secure it. All right. Then boom. Once you know that where the danger is coming from, not a foul at all. You use all your force. I mean, he's he's not one of the biggest guys on the field. As a matter of fact, he's probably almost always one of the smallest. Once you do that, then you can get out. What you can see at this clip right here is that Verratti's a bit in trouble. He's got the ball with tons of time and quite a bit of space, but the problem is he doesn't see a way out. Because he can't see a way out, the other team smells blood. And what do you do? You attack. As soon as you feel like the other player is going to be under pressure, you attack. And so they do a good job of coming into him to close down the play, but Verratti does even better. So he, he exchanges the ball, a quick one-two, gets the ball back. But as you can see, all of the players start to push up. And once that happens, he knows that he has to turn around. All right, that's, your, that's the objective of that team. They want to stop forward movement and get the guys to look backwards. Now Verratti's turned. Because he's turned, he knows that everything else goes out the window. You're not worrying about attacking. You're just worrying about protecting the ball now, okay? And one of the most important things you'll notice, guys like Iniesta, Xavi, uh, Kante, Modric, Cruz, they have no problems playing with their back to goal with guys on them. And it's easier than you think. It's not to say that these guys aren't ex extremely talented at what they do, but this is one of the best things because you know this guy is here. It's not like you don't know where he's coming from. He's coming from here. So that becomes a dance for you to try and figure out how to get him off your back. But all you do, and as you see, he keeps checking in, keeping the ball, slight feints, somebody else comes to double. He knows where the space is because he just came out of that. And coming out right at the point where you left is a skill that we're going to talk about right now. So just as a side note, those of you guys that have not checked out our shielding videos and all that stuff, you might think that it's not important. This guy has made his entire living off of being a good shielder of the ball, of a good protector of the ball. There is a position and a spot for you if you can hone that skill very well. And this guy's done it. He's one of the best in the world at what he does. And it's all has to do with shielding and understanding space. If you watch Verratti closely, you'll notice that he gets out of tight spaces all the time. And it's a principle that you guys need to know whether you're an attacker or a defender, it's because you can turn into where you were. The ball's turned over in the run of play. Verratti ends up with it. He immediately gets pressured by two guys. First thing he does, what we just talked about, you immediately look to shield. It's just a simple rule of thumb. Look to shield. Don't look to do the step over. Don't look to try to beat the guy in front of you. Shield so you get something under control. If you have nothing under control, you don't know what to do, all right? So he gets the ball under control. Another guy's coming. He can sense that danger. Where does he go? The only space is where he was. He pulls the move into himself. It'll work in the back end as a defender and it'll work in the front as an attacking player in the corner. You turn into yourself. The reason this works is because you know the space is there. They don't assume that they can get you, all right? With two guys coming from both sides, the only place that they can't cover is where you were, where your body is. And if you can turn in and under your body like that, folding in upon yourself, you're gonna get out. And that's exactly what you see Verratti does here. So this clip from uh, just a few years back, I'm assuming because Ibrahimovic is on the field there at PSG. This is another point for you guys that are playing in the midfield, especially in your defensive defensive area. You can take a touch. One touch will get you out of a tight jam, all right? So there are plenty of PSG guys right there. Verratti's asking for the ball because he sees the space. He's already noted that he's split these two guys and if he takes a good touch forward, he's gonna beat three players in one touch. That's what you need to do. Simplify, simplify, simplify. That's what these players do. That's what Pirlo did. You name your best defensive midfielders. They're going to simplify the game for you. You just give them the ball when they ask for it. That's it. That's their job. All right. So as we see, he gets the ball. Boom. First touch. Those other two guys think that he's going to lay the ball off to the, to the other PSG guys. And he doesn't. He turns into the space that they just left. And now he's in on another three guys. So another thing you'll notice is that as soon as he feels like he can't go forward, what does he do? He starts to protect the ball. He turns around, which is generally a no-no. They're going to tell you, especially in the U.S., they'll tell you, don't turn, you know, face your goal, do whatever. There's going to be times we need to break those rules. You yourself are going to have to figure that out. He understands that. I can protect the ball, turn around. All those guys he beat are now starting to come back. But what happens? Ibrahimovic makes an excellent run, splitting the two center backs. All he's got to do is clip it over and he finishes. All right, guys, that's the vid. Remember, if you want to ask us questions for the Q&A, subscribe to the 11th Commandment and throw your questions right down below. Make sure to like, make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you guys later. Peace.
Obviously, as a defensive midfielder, you need to stop a counterattack. Ergo, this. 